Sarah called me a couple of months back and asked me if we could speak at the, or if I could speak at the Web 2.0 conference in New York. And we talked about what I could talk about that would bring value to this audience. And very quickly, we honed in on e commerce. And the reason we honed in on e commerce was because e commerce is still in such an infancy state. I know it's been around for, for, I guess, over a decade at this point, but it's such an early stage where less than 6% of all sales is still done online. Which means a lot more as it grows online will result in changes, challenges, problems. And one of the fortunate positions we've had at, at Next Jump over 16 years is 30,000 merchant partners, online, offline, sitting and watching what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong,、um, some of the biggest、um, challenges and common problems we've seen, but also how they've solved it,、um, how we've solved it. And so we thought. Very quickly, what can we do in a very short 10 minutes walking you through the real data behind e commerce and some of the most common patterns and insights? Just really quickly, I don't want to talk too much about Next Jump, but the basic premise of what we do, we get to consumers through buying circles, what we refer to as B2B to C. Um, and we aggregate their buying power. On the flip side of the business, we work with merchant partners and we redirect their ad spend towards better pricing and in return for guaranteed sales. So it's all about commerce. The company, even though we refer to ourselves as a startup, We're really not a startup in the sense of we're really big at this point. And we try to stay hidden as long as possible. But sometime last year, it started to feel silly like we're hiding an elephant under a haystack. So we had our first article come out December 6th of 2009. But a lot of partnerships, a lot of merchants, and as well as、um, a tremendous team that we work with. And underlying all that is a lot of data that has really led us to be able to tell you. Some of the key problems that we have seen come up in e commerce. And one of the most interesting. Notions that we've watched is the similarity between offline and online, and how a lot of bad behaviors from offline commerce translate directly online. So, four things I just want to touch on real quick because if we can identify the problem well, it's easy to talk about the solution. So, one, pushy sales, being very pushy, buy it now, screaming at the consumer, buy this right now, a common problem we see out there. No service sales. Overwhelming the consumer with just too many choices and say, go help yourself. We're not going to help you. No data. And when you have no data, you end up doing untargeted marketing and eventually you will spam. And spam is the modern day word for unwanted advertising. When you don't want it, it's spam. Wrong data. Now, when you have wrong data, you have targeted marketing, but the most common challenge in wrong data is privacy breach. A lot of companies with data will always run into privacy breach and cannot use the data anymore. So, I'm going to take you through these really quickly. Pushy sales, buy it now. When you look in the offline world, this is something that, whether it's a used car salesperson or for those of you who are old enough to remember Crazy Eddie screaming at you saying, buy this right now, you look online, how different is it? Now, this is an exaggerated case with pop ups screaming. At you saying buy this right now, but a lot of sites. In fact, banner ads have moved from tiny ads in the top all the way to cutting across the entire screen, screaming at you saying buy it. This is not good for the consumer. The second challenge that we have seen in a common pattern is no service sales. Go help yourself. When you look at go help yourself, you walk into a store. This is a very common scene at a physical store. Way too many choices. You don't even know where to start. But you start online. And of course, I, I picked on our, our friendly neighbors, the UK, because I didn't want to pull any US sites. But this is very common. Like, where do you start? As a consumer, you go on, you don't know where your eyes should go, where you should click. This is a common challenge we have seen in a lot of e commerce sites. Now, at the same time, when we talk about data, no data equals spam. When you don't have data, you end up spamming users because you're broadcasting unwanted advertising. In the physical world, you see this in your mailbox at home almost every single day. In your mailbox, under your door, I mean, just advertising coming in through the door, I mean, the amount of paper waste, tremendous. When you look online, this is 9 a.m. in the morning, 254 spam emails coming through. It only grows through the course of the day. At the same time, wrong data. Wrong data. Too much data is a problem a lot of companies have, but privacy breach tends to be what we talk about most. But when we look at data itself, The Economist had a recent article, 14 pages of The Economist, and I think the size of the magazine now, that's probably half the magazine, talking about too much data. And in today's world, which is data saturated, you find three common themes that sites or companies will go after saying content is king, get a lot of content, traffic is king, get a ton of traffic. You know, data is king, get a lot of data. And before you know it, you've got a lot. A lot of content, a lot of unmonetized users, a lot of unusable data. And when you start to try to use it, you 
hit privacy breach is probably one of the biggest challenges. But other challenges, when you start to become irritating, um, using your data incorrectly or poorly, big banner spam occurs, big brother intrusion, privacy breach, you've got internet scams of all sorts, everything leads to unsustainable business models, very common challenges. So I want to talk about some of the key things we've seen work when solving the problem. And so 16 years of our insights and key lessons, four areas really quickly. Segmentation, it's critically important. Learn to segment your customers. You can do simple Simple segmentation, complex segmentation, but segmentation because not all consumers should be treated the same. They're different in value. Targeted value. Everyone doesn't want the same thing. We'll take you through some products we've built around that. Listening and servicing the consumer. You want to make the consumer happy, you have to listen to them. And by the way, if you listen to them well and you service them, it's no different than a concierge you know, um, desk at a hotel. You're giving them great service. It solves privacy breach. And the last piece, which cannot be ignored, is that you really have one chance. Everyone forgets that with any consumer you see, one chance, one opportunity to get it right, be right, right from the beginning, not the second, third, fourth, or fifth time, right from the start. So starting with segmentation, everything starts with a consumer. Um, I'm going to show you a slide that, that is a screenshot of a program we have, a product called Customer Lifetime Value. You know, obviously, in this case, the individual who spent a lot more spending $17,000, more valuable than someone who spent $6,000 or a couple hundred bucks. But the simplest segmentation we see that works is three customer segments of first-time users. In your first 30 days, treat those people differently. We talk internally about a product called a tunnel of love. Get them going through the most optimal consumer experience in the first 30 days. High-value members, people who are loyal to you, spending more, treat them differently, give them better pricing. Those are the people that will drive 80% of your profits. And then, of course, inactives, always focusing on inactiva activating your inactives. Then you move on to targeted value because not everyone wants the same thing. We have a product called PTPS. It stands for Price, Time, Product, and Service. Because not everyone wants the same thing, and everyone's focused today, especially with this recession and deals, deals, deals. But a value-added offering to a consumer can be different. A first-time jobber, someone who gets a job, this is a bridal client we work with, 12% discount, that's what they want. And 12% discount, by the way, is approximately $500 in this case. Then you have a workaholic, someone who's working all the time, extremely busy. The $500 is worth less than for this individual to get a Saturday appointment to be able to do a dress fitting. That is much more important to them. And by the way, that costs a lot less than 500 bucks. A fashionista, someone who's into fashion, meet the designer. A lot of merchants will have leverage over designers, and they will actually bring the designer in. Once again, costs a lot less. That's more valuable than a 12% discount. The single and affluent individual wants to be pampered, wants to be serviced. Getting limo on lunch service, once again, a lot less than 500 more valuable. So we have products that focus on saying the right offer to the right customer doesn't always mean price. Listening and servicing the customers. This is something that we internally built a product called Reminders. It's reacting to lost savings opportunities. So from left to right, the consumer goes in and says, I missed the sale, but if JetBlue has 25% off, let me know. The system goes automatically within 24 hours. If there's an exact offer, send you an email notification right away, as you asked. Secondly, if there isn't an exact offer, it finds a related offer or similar offer. Could be Southwest Airlines, Samsonite luggage. If you like travel, we'll send you an offer. If none of those exist, you get 1,000 points towards a purchase of any JetBlue. That's basically 10 bucks. And if you look at some of the metrics below, I mean, these are astronomically high. To get an email open click-through rate, open to click-through of 14% total, and then from those who click through, 30% made a transaction. I mean, these numbers are through the roof to what you'll typically see out there. Um, the merchant view. We take the same view of every consumer who said, at this price point, I'll buy, and the actual merchant can see the demand and fulfill that in real time as well. Once again, only one chance to get it right. When you take a look, data matters to make sure you know what you're doing. Meaning that in the course of the year, um, you look at apparel versus travel. In the month of July, don't market apparel to the consumers. Um, you want to market travel because that's what's in season. You go in deeper, we have products where merchants can see down to the specific day what sells the most and converts the highest. Um, and when it comes down to understanding data, why it matters is because you need to be relevant. When it came to travel, consumers reacted to destinations most. But the destinations matter where you originate from. When you look at women versus men, women book in longer windows, but people who lived in California typically went to San Diego and San Francisco. People from New York, men go to Las Vegas, number one. Women go to Florida. Women with children to Orlando. Women who are single to Miami. As a result, get relevant there. 
When you go to affluent groups in California, they go to Hawaii. In New York, they go to different cities: London, Paris, and Cancun. Nirvana, as in what we aspire for. So, in the real world, what we aspire for is this. There's a local restaurant I go to. I've been there over 10 times. The owner finally recognized me and said, "Every time I walk in, I get a free glass of red wine and free dessert. Better price, better service. I am extremely loyal." When you go to the online world, I believe we can do better. I believe we can do a lot better than 10 visits before you treat the customer like the, the valued customer they are. Data and product engineering is a key to it. Thank you very much.